Senate Bill 1325, having received a constitutional majority, I declare pass without objection. The motion to break Sarah's table. This is the reaction of rage, hurt, and anger. This is what started it all. Tennessee representatives passing a bill that will soon allow teachers to carry guns in schools across the state. And chaos erupted. Hey there, freedom fighters. I'm coming back with another one. In today's episode, we're going to talk about recent events, some uh, anti-gun laws they're passing, and some pro-gun laws. That clip you saw in the beginning came from our residential uh, lawyer friend and FUD over there at the NRG, Mr. Coleon Noir. So I saw that video he posted of the kids protesting and walking out of school and um, forming some kind of protest against their teachers now being allowed to carry firearms. So we're going to talk about that, but, um, and I guess this is a good time to mention, if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button and share the content. And if you end up liking the video and feel the need to subscribe, that would be great. Help support the channel. But yeah, let's get back to that clip. It wasn't just, you know, a motion of like, oh, we want to be loud. There was mothers in there crying. So Jermaine Cole Jr. organized a protest. <laughs> Dozens of people screaming and chanting just inches away from the house floor. And they acted out a die-in, laying on the ground in silence to get their point across. Giving teachers pistols in classrooms. My little brother is 10 years old. I don't want him anywhere close to a gun. I'm a college student myself. I don't want to be near a gun. Like, dude grow up how old are you i mean he says like i'm a college student and i don't even want to be around a gun well that's because you're a modern day pussified american coddled little bitch but it's probably even worse than that you know most of these people are commie activists but the protest didn't end inside what happens when my teacher had a rough morning or rough night before class what happens when a student gets too rowdy? What happens when a student finds the gun? I've been doing active shooter drills since kindergarten. I'm a junior in high school and I still have them. My first lockdown was in kindergarten. My last one was September 13th, 2023. High school students took over Legislative Plaza crying out to state leaders. I shouldn't have to be told to zigzag in the hallway because it's harder to hit a moving target. I should have to text my parents for the last time saying I'm scared. This is a real shooter. It shouldn't have to be my teacher. <laughs> And through those tears, students say we'll continue to fight. And we will vote you out if you don't listen because we want to be safe in our schools. And then you see these uh, two girls at the end crying about, you know, their safety. And, you know, like I say, facts over feelings. Or I actually have a sticker on one of my ammo boxes that say my rights don't end where your feelings begin. So I'm not trying to take away from maybe their genuine and legitimate fear. But just because your need to feel safe doesn't trump my freedom. And get to take over what I want to do to feel safe and, and be free. And you see these signs saying no guns in schools. And you know they're fighting for their teachers to be disarmed. Well that was already the rule before. The unconstitutional gun-free zones that are schools that should be destroyed by Bruin because those never existed. And then out of nowhere, they barred everyone from possessing firearms and these uh, no-gun zones that are unconstitutional. And look, all the events that you are afraid of happening happened anyway. Because when people with ill intent want to go commit a crime or do something... No sign on a door or window is going to stop them. Only people in there with equal force are going to stop them. And what these girls don't understand, you know, they're saying vote them out. No, there is no voting them out. What you're saying is to kill 
people like me. And they don't understand that the people they're following, like this, uh, they said that Jermaine Cole Jr., that kid who doesn't want to be around guns, started the protest. But if you saw in that clip of the lay down or the die down that they call it, one of those guys, I think his name is Justin Jones. He was one of the guys expelled out of the Tennessee legislator or something. Um, he's another one of these Marxist activists. And what these girls and these kids don't realize is they're being used as pawns by these commies who are at war. And they're using you to kill people like me. And that's what this is all about. They are at war and they don't give a damn about your safety. You think that they're fighting for this because they want you to feel safer in schools? No, they want you to vote to send the hit squad out to kill Americans who aren't giving up their Second Amendment. That's what it's all about. And that's what they don't realize. And you know what this reminds me of? Who can forget that Eric Holder clip where he says day in and day out, you have to beat these kids over the head with these anti-gun messages and make them afraid and literally brainwash them into being anti-gun. But of course, he himself is an anti-gun. He has no problem gun running to Mexican cartels and Fast and Furious and being a part of the criminal organization he's a part of. He just is all in for the Marxist commie indoctrination in disarming the public. Uh, I will also ask the school board to make a part of every day some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. So yeah, I mean, these kids don't realize that they've been indoctrinated and the fear they feel, the being taught how to zigzag through the hallways and get under your desk and, uh, oh yeah, you know, someone's coming in quick, run and hide, and your classmates are all after you. This is the propaganda you've been fed so you can be used as a pawn to disarm the population. And again, they are at war with the Constitution and rights. They're trying to take down America and they're using you as their pawns. And you know, I saw, I don't know if you recognize this banner that they were parading around in there saying, how many more? And this is a slogan they've been using for a long time. I've noticed it in the March for Our Lives, the David Hogg used it. I seen an interview a while back where this girl was talking about gun control as well. And she used that slogan. She's like, you know, how much are, how many more lives are we going to allow to be lost before we do something about this? And I've always thought, well, how many are you willing to take? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what it's going to be. You're sending a hit squad to go collect people's rightfully owned property that is enshrined in the Constitution, the document that founded this country, and you're saying, no, we don't do that anymore, and anyone who resists is going to be killed. And, you know, I I made a joke one time about, you know, the Charlie Brown teacher, when she speaks, like, you know, you don't hear anything she's saying, it's just like, and it's like, I don't even hear what these people say anymore. It's all just irrelevant to me. Because once you're at the end game, what, what you know they're trying to do, it's just all the same stuff. As South Park actually did a good episode one time. I think it was um, the TV or something was all garbage. And it all sounded like crap. Or I think it was music. And like the parents were listening to the songs and they're like, this sounds like shit. And then I think it was Stan or Kyle or something like that. You know, he grew up and he's listening to the music one day and it was all just like farts and, and he's like, they're like, you don't like this guy? And he's like, no, this is like literal shit. And 
that's basically where we're at. I don't even pay attention anymore to the, you know, Bill ABC 123 or whatever, 123 ABC Bill, because at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. And I said it before, like when people like Beto or these politicians are like, heck yeah, we're coming for your ARs, your AKs. Biden said, bingo, we're coming for it. All I hear is we're coming to kill you. That's it. And that's what these kids don't realize. But anyway, on to the next uh, news event here is the shootout in North Carolina and Charlotte. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but yeah, they came in and busted through this dude's door and he fired back. And supposedly it's because he's a felon in possession of a firearm. And, you know, we've talked about that a lot before on this channel. Is you cannot deprive a free man of his rights. Okay, so I don't know what he was charged with prior. But just like in a recent event with the Jonathan Diller. Uh, from all, you know, intensive purposes. All that I've researched was he was um, doing a traffic stop and getting ready to do gun confiscation. And again, this guy's in New York. He's not allowed to possess firearms. Supposedly, he's a felon. Um, I looked into his record, and all I saw were some drug charges or something like that. So again, not like he's anyone you know you have to be worried about. I didn't see any violent things on his record. And again, I go even further. I know a lot of people don't agree with this. But again, if you did your time... Uh, you know, you you did the crime, you did the time, then you're absolved. Once they let you out, you're free. You know how I feel about that. But yeah, so this guy in Charlotte, they busted down his door with the U.S. Marshal hit squad, and he took a few of them out. And I'll try to post the links and the pictures and stuff in here, but it shows that they completely destroyed his home. I'm not sure if they mortar shelled it or... Uh, threw grenades at it or whatnot, but the whole front fascia is blown off the house. And, I mean, they'll do anything they can. Um, and I looked into his record, and supposedly all it was was uh, some firearm possession charges, and they said he fleed and eluded. Of course he's fleeing and eluding. Look, he knew what they were going to do to him. Uh, when you know... That the hit squad is coming for you and they're going to kill you just like they recently did with uh, the Brian Wilanowski guy, the airport CEO or whatever. They're going to kill you. So when they're coming after you, yeah, you're going to flee and elude. So if that's all his only crimes are firearm possession and fleeing and eluding, it's like, yeah, you got stormtroopers chasing you down for your natural rights and they're going to kill you. And that's what these kids want. People need to show them that. What hap just happened in Charlotte is what you're voting for when you say vote them out. And they've already proven. And they can kill you in the process. They recently put into, I think it was the Supreme Court. Said when you're chasing a fleeing felon, you know, you can just, anyone who's in the way, just blow them away too. Which was a story of a truck driver who uh, got kidnapped, a fleeing felon jumped in and, and uh, held him hostage, and the cops just opened fire and like shot the innocent truck driver like nine or ten times and blew off his hand and I think some of his fingers and, uh, you know, caught some to the chest and a whole bunch. And, I mean, he's lucky to be alive. He turned around and sued him, and the courts were like, nope, the cops are just doing their job. You know, enforcing those laws and getting those guns off the street. That's what it's all about, and these kids don't see it. And then I read this other article I'll have to link from CNN. Make That's no surprise. But it was called, The Ludicrous Reason People Want AR-15s. And I'll go through that and try to read a little bit here, but I said I'll, I'll link it says, no weapon has been more in the public eye in America than the AR-15, in large part because of its tragic role in some of this country's deadliest shootings. 
The AR-15 is the dubious distinction of being America's most popular semi-auto rifle. I'm familiar with the gun more than most people. I own one, and one thing I know for sure is this weapon doesn't belong in the hands of the average civilian. Yeah, you hear that, you average civilian peasant. So it says here, Officer Michael Fanone attends the 15th annual CNN Hero Awards. So again, CNN, the defund the police, all these people, they're holding the CNN heroes, upholding cops, but it's the commie cops that uphold their version. The Oath Breakers. They have no problem celebrating these people. And this is why I also don't get along with many on the right, because they so uh, fervently back the blue and I'm constantly telling them man these people don't back you so here he says that you know he's a street cop and you know for some oh yeah Washington DC uh commie police so there you go he says I'm also a card carrying member of the NRA and I wasn't at my job doing police work I worked part-time for firearm sales uh, training law server, uh, law enforcement and military and civilians. I purchased many different guns over the years uh, for many different reasons. I use for turkey hunting and waterfowl, and I hunt deer and larger game like elk. I purchased my AR-15 because I was signed one of my police duties, but officers aren't allowed to take your department-issued uh, weapons home. And I felt it was my responsibility to become proficient with weapons I was assigned. I've sold guns at big box retailers. I've sold firearms at small retail gun stores. And buyers have been misled into thinking the AR-15 is sometimes practical for self-defense. But it pra frankly, it's the last gun I would recommend for that purpose. Then it says, I've pressed some customers about why they want an AR-15, but no one could ever come up with a legitimate justification for needing that particular weapon. Oh, well, I definitely can. But then he goes on and says, well, some members of the Tinfoil Hat Brigade have come up with the reply, we need these weapons because we want to be effective against the government if it becomes tyrannical. And that's part of our Second Amendment right. Personally, I think that's ludicrous because it has become increasingly popular juris justification for purchasing a semi-auto rifle. So again, here he is, you know, the same thing Bynes says. Oh, if you want to defend yourself against a tyrannical government, you need missiles and nukes. Well, why are you so afraid of it? And then in the next uh, segment of the article, he says... Uh, the AR-15 was given to law enforcement because more frequently police officers were encountering these types of weapons on the street and finding that they were outgunned. Good. That's exactly how it's supposed to happen. You're not supposed to just waddle your way in to someone's home and they're, you know, less armed than you so you can have your way with them. And then it, it says the example is the 1997 North Hollywood California bank robbery. But, you know, in Charlotte, they came across the same thing. You know, that guy was a felon. And I've always said, like, you know, the military saying, be the best you can be. Once they make you a felon, you might as well be the best felon you can be. I mean, why aren't you drilling the holes and using the Glock switches and, you know, everything else? So he had full autos. And when they came for him, he was at least equally armed to be able to take four people out. And that's what they don't want. They want you to have your bolt-action rifle or your little Derringer 22 pistol so they can come in with thermal vision and AI robots and waste you away without any opposition, which is going to be a future video I'll talk about as well. But that's pretty much the gist of this, man. We covered a couple topics here. Um, you know, actually, one other thing I was thinking of that I was going to bring up that no one's mentioned about this Tennessee thing is you're seeing a lot of state versus federal, you know, fights going on. And, you know, at the border, 
and abortion. And I'm wondering if they're not going to run raids on these schools in Tennessee and find these teachers who are carrying and charge them. Or if they ever have to use it in self-defense to stop one of these events from happening, you know, they charge them after the fact. They're like, why do you have a, you know, a weapon here? And they're going to say it's legal, but it's not going to be legal for them. You know, case in point, they've had stuff in Colorado and other states where they legalize these dispensaries. And they're like, look, we have a personal, uh, a perfectly legitimate legal business here. And they're getting raided and they say, no, this isn't federally legal. We don't care what your state says. And then, you know, people have been debanked and they go to the bank and they're like, what's the problem? You know, I, I filed all the paperwork. I have a legal business. And they're like, no, the, the feds say we can't bank for you. So they might do the same thing with these teachers. Uh, it's definitely something to be aware of. But, you know, as always, man, just stay wild and free. And you know what the message is, is we are on our own. No one's coming to save us. So get right with God because only God can save you. Freedom Fighters out.